like is Solana trying to be more decentralized in any ways, or is it fine with like the current status of decentralization on Solana? Like, are, are you trying to be as decentralized as Ethereum, for example, or is it not the case? Because so far, I think one of the biggest complaints we've we've seen from like people that are skeptical about Solana is that it is a VC chain. Uh, everything runs like on a couple of nodes and and handled by like a few people. FTX could like click on a button and turn it off. Um, this right. is what they are saying. I'm not saying that to be honest. Uh, but what are your thoughts on this? And yeah, how do you think about it? Yeah, so I will say a lot of that is just like not factually accurate. Um, and so Solana has about half as many nodes as Ethereum does. So okay. we're not caught up to Ethereum by any means. There's about 7,000 uh, Ethereum nodes out there. Uh, if you go to uh, nodewatch.io, it shows you how many Ethereum nodes there actually are. Um, you know, there's about half as many Solana nodes out there. So I think we're pretty good for, you know, a tenth of the market cap of Ethereum to have half of it, half, half as decentralized. Like, that's not, that's not bad. Which is um, pretty young also. This is yeah, the network's younger too. To mention. Yeah. There's also, you know, there's one area that Ethereum is quite further ahead, which is the number of validator clients. So in Ethereum, there are about six different validator clients that exist that run on, you know, several different code bases. Solana today has two different validator clients yeah. um, that are based on the same code base, uh, which is the Gito Labs client and the Solana Labs client. Um, but a major initiative for the network is actually the creation of a wholesale new validator client called FireDancer. This is written in a new programming language from the ground up um, to be a separate implementation of the Solana network spec. And so those are some of the main decentralization initiatives that the Solana Foundation has been supporting um, is the creation of multiple validator clients. Uh, and so that's kind of a major step forwards in the decentralization of the network. So it's kind of one of those things where it's a little bit of a Rorschach test. Like if you think Ethereum today is sufficiently decentralized, you should be pretty comfortable with Solana. If you don't think to Ethereum is sufficiently decentralized, then you're not going to think Solana is sufficiently decentralized either. Um, you know, my my personal opinion is if we actually want, you know, 10% of the global economy to run on blockchain, we probably need to an order of magnitude more nodes on all blockchain networks than we have today. Um, but, you know, that's also, uh, that's a that's a very high goal. And I have no doubt that if we actually get to that Long point. Long-term goal. Yeah. yeah, like the economic incentives alone would support that many nodes um, if blockchain adoption actually reaches anywhere near, you know, 10% of the global financial system. Um, so a lot of these problems are just problems of economic incentive. And so as more people use blockchain, uh, the economic incentives will likely support more people running, more businesses running nodes. You mentioned Fire Dancer, uh, which is something uh, I'm monitoring and watching for like a couple of weeks, month now. Um, yeah. I, I got more interest uh, into Fire Dancer since last uh, Solana Breakpoint. And in my opinion, this is one of the biggest narratives we will see like on Solana, or at least something that will hype people about Solana. Um, do you share my thoughts on this? And what, in your opinion, would be the change with like the situation before Fire Dancer and after? What what will it change uh, in your opinion? Yeah, so Fire Dancer is anywhere between 10 to 100 times more performant than the Solana Labs client today. Now, this doesn't mean that we're going to go from a steady state of 4,000 transactions to 400,000 transactions per second <laughs> on Solana. Uh, there's a lot of other things in the real world that will dictate how fast the network is actually able to run. But... Uh, you know, at the very least, this will mean that the Solana network is faster and cheaper to run, right? The, they, uh, the team building FireDancer are getting these performance metrics using the exact same hardware people are using today to run Solana validators. So this and is quite so, realistic. This is what you're saying. Yeah, this, I mean, it, it is. Uh, the, the biggest limiting factor uh, will be bandwidth, right? And so this is one of those things where um, it's not, you know, one of the great things about hardware is it gets faster every year. Um, and we don't have to do anything to make that happen. Intel and NVIDIA <laughs> and AMD in, and TSMC, <laughs> they're, they're putting uh, hundreds of billions of dollars a year into R&D to make chips faster and faster and faster. And so, you know, we get to piggyback on all of that great work that they're doing just by having the nature of Solana be something where hardware performance is a dr main driver of the network performance. 
Uh, and so, you know, from my perspective, uh, one of the great things about Fire Dancer is it's squeezing more performance out of the same hardware. And so uh, that's a really good sign for, you know, either reducing the cost to run the validator or massively increasing the capacity and throughput of the network. 